that's pretty cool. This is the day. Is that you guys driving there? Yeah. Look at that. It's driving downtown Los Angeles. It was very hazy. I'm Corey Brill. I'm really happy to be talking about Saturday, July 24th. I'm Joe Beyer. Also happy to be talking about our day. This is driving into downtown Los Angeles around 10 a.m. You're a fast driver, Corey. <laughs> I think this might be a little sped up. Wait, what time were we down there? I think uh, I got there at 8.30 and you got oh, there okay. about 8.45. Okay. Very close. Almost got you that take a, You take a different route than I do. It looks like it. Oh, and here we are coming around the corner up to the parking lot. Yep. Bees are right on top of that building. I bet it was about 80 degrees that early, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I thought so. The second I put on that suit, I start to sweat. Yeah. I thought you guys were coming to, to repaint something. <laughs> it looks like... <laughs> And you have to have a yellow headband that's like regulation beekeeping. Yeah, they sell the yellow headband at the beekeeping store. In fact, yeah. that's how required it is. I saw a guy running in the fact, other day. In fact, I don't think... Um, are you allowed to buy anything there without... Well, that's the thing. I saw a guy running with one the other day and I thought, he better thought be a fucking a beekeeper. beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's that there? We smoking them. I don't remember that we started there. Did we? Yeah, we started with that one. That's Joe there. That's the front of the, the newest hive on the rooftop. Right? Yeah. That's the one we just put in, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, three weeks. Maybe John Nine wants to do some guest commentary. We're doing something <coughs> podcasting. You know, streaming. Podcasting from the party. Yeah, this live, is live. Guys are such nerds. Say hi to America. <laughs> Say hi to the world. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, really encourage the use of burkas with beekeeping, but I, I noticed your wife always wears one, she has. which looks nice. She doesn't like now wearing look how calm. it Here, day folks, to day. This is, this is really important. So at this point, there's, there's a lot of interest and calm, and you're going to see me take this super off, and about 30 seconds after I take it off, there's, there's, I sensed... I really did. It was it was that quick that I sensed something was wrong, yeah. and they were getting they were getting you know. Hi, I'm Joy Asmansky. I'm Corey's wife. This is my role in the beekeeping venture. I try to stay out of the way, provide help, tools when necessary. Um, I'm happy to stay out of the way. Uh, beekeeping has become an obsession for these two guys. It's weird to me that it's totally normal to stand in this cloud of bees now. And, and actually, I, I haven't had any cases where I've been too afraid. Um, Corey, has, Corey and Joe have both been stung, I don't know how many dozens of times now. And it's just part of the, it's just part of the deal. I don't think either one of them will have any arthritis later in life. So this rooftop has become a four-hive rooftop. And thank you to our landlord who has allowed us to do this. People are incredulous when we say that we keep bees on a, on a rooftop in downtown L.A. As far as we know, we're the only ones to do it. And, um, you know, the bees fly in a six-mile radius, so there's tons of stuff that they can get in, in that amount of space, and it yields this amazingly rich and uh, diverse-tasting honey, different than any honey I've ever tasted before, and also according to season or whatever, it's, it's different, which is awesome. You're tasting the fruits of that particular labor right at the time. So Corey and Joe talk about the bees. They refer to them as our girls. <laughs> and 
they have become very much, uh, you know, personified, I think, t- to these two guys. Um, they are obsessed, and I, I'm, I'm learning that that is the only way you, you are when you, when you take care of hundreds of thousands of little winged creatures. You become extremely protective and you know their their lives are in your hands and in a way I mean it's nature so it's going to be wild and do what it's going to do but if you are agreeing to put them in this place and nurture them along and try to protect them from various elements then you know you feel responsible of course and they really really do which is nice though um it's a fun thing to watch happen to a person is this level of care taken about an insect that we're becoming of course more aware that needs our care uh, in, a di- in a different way but um, you know a, in, a, in a totally unique perspective on the world how this little insect affects so much of what we do and what we eat and how we live so it's been a really wonderful experience caretaking um, and being involved and humbling seeing what they, what they do Uh, this was the the cutout. You've yeah. done two cutouts now. Done two cutouts. Yeah, you're way ahead of me in Man. terms of... This one actually is turning out good. Yeah, it was... A, it was uh, the first time we checked it, I thought they weren't going to um, survive, to tell you the truth. Remember how do- uh, they were just so... La- it was yeah. like the laziness, but maybe it's the disorientation. Maybe. Well, the last time you know we checked I mean? it, we didn't see any sign of a queen. That's right. And this time we saw baby bees in there. I had two queens. Oh, that's right. I only have one queen because somebody crushed the queen cell. Oh, sorry, man. That's like looking for a four-leaf clover for 14 <laughs> days straight and finding one and then having somebody pull like one of the four leaves off of it so that it's no longer what it was. I'm really sorry. It's all right. I'm sorry I put all my bees on your roof. (laughs) It's a lot of bees on one roof, man. I'm shocked, frankly, that there's no kind of competitive... um, It does not appear that there's a competitive impact. Do you know what I'm saying? I just can't believe the city hasn't, like, found it and shot it down. Yeah, yeah. This is when we okay, checked now your head a final the... time. No, no, is it? Yeah, this is right... Oh, I'm disoriented, okay. This is right before we left. Brother, that's not my hive, that's your hive. Because my top two supers oh, yeah. are a wood and a white. You're right, and you have two yep. deeps. Yep. Yeah, those are... This is mine. Yep. Isn't that, look at the, uh, that's Somebody a cool angle. It's okay. I just grab my phone room. Yeah. That's right, because one of these <laughs> frames was sticking up, and you... Yep, yep. This hive only one week earlier attacked you. Yeah. I mean, they really did. They really did. 31 stings on my ankles. All on my I'm, ankles. <laughs> the two incidents combined, what happened at my house and then that to you, within two weeks of each other, made me really feel... Uh, Yes. Much more serious about it. Yeah, it made me feel like, what have we got into? Yeah. Yeah, how are you? 
going to the pool. I did realize how much of what we did incorrectly, though, affected their behavior. I would say. Yeah. I mean, I've really thought through it many times. I mean, like taking that hunt, it, just everything that we did, it was just, it was, uh, it was an amateur hour. It was just not optimum for behavior. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh man, you I know wish I we hadn't supers. gone down to that garage. I got garage. two supers at my uh, house. Oh, that's it. That's it? That's it. Well, that's a cool video.